Hi everybody, welcome to another special webinar brought to you by BD Suisse. Marius Kiriakou and today we are going to experience together the market volatility from the NFP report and also at the same time we have the release of Canada's employment data. Um, we would like to remind you that uh, trading during uh, important news releases like this one, which is the most important news of the month, uh, is considered to be um, yeah, there is a risk involved. You should be um, informed, get as much information as possible regarding trading CFD products and uh, make sure that you uh, have an established risk management uh, strategy um during this uh, during your trading uh, uh journey and let's uh the, th the first thing that we should do is to take a good look at the um headlines of what happened yesterday uh what happened during this week uh, we have our daily analysis that we publish to our website at bdswiss.com uh, if you go to daily market analysis, for example, uh, let me share as well this one. Okay, you should be able to see that now. Um, so we have, uh, since the 2nd of April, we have metals lead. Actually, it's quite um, noticeable that uh, the uh, metals uh gained too much this week we had an unbelievable performance uh, if we take a good look at the at gold for example we can see on the hourly chart that since the uh 27th uh 28th so late last month we have a, an uptrend formed and this has currently um put to a stop because we see that the price for example is under the 30 period moving average on every single of my charts you will see the 30 period moving average because i'm looking at things intraday yeah i'm not uh using a, a, a four hour daily chart and that's why i prefer the 30 period moving average um i mean also share that screen as well entire screen so we are here okay so now you see gold for example we see that from the 20th of uh, the previous month march it has uh it was on an uptrend uh we already discussed this and mentioned that uh, there was a kind of win-win situation for gold uh, because regardless of uh, what is going to happen with uh, the EU, with the Federal Reserve, cuts or no cuts, it seems that gold uh, is gaining uh, attention and gaining activity and also is preferred as a uh, safe haven asset as well. And that's why it's very hard for gold uh, to drop significantly. And you see, this uptrend forming uh even though we have some statements from the fed doesn't change the uh this uh resilience of gold so it was a very good opportunity to hold gold during this time however this might change uh, a little bit uh with the news with the employment data release because uh, they play a vital role in, in what uh, eventually the Fed will decide. Uh, delay in cuts or no delay in cuts. Uh, obviously, if we see, for example, strong employment report, this would mean, or more than expected change in employment, this would mean that it's very hard for inflation to drop. And this might, you know, change the opinions of the um, FOFC members. They might change the uh, narrative as well, and we might see more delays, and this would mean dollar appreciation. Yeah, so it could affect gold as well. 
And um, if we look at things technically with gold, we already know that we have this uh, a crossover to the downside. We might see a, a downtrend forming or even a, a retracement. Not exactly a downtrend, I mean a strong one, but some retracement could take place. By looking at the four hour chart, for example, we see that uh, there is some room for retracement, um, but uh, considering also the fundamentals, it's only um, a guess, let's say, of where that retracement will be. By using the Fibonacci expansion, uh, placing it correctly on the chart, we see that the 61.8 falls around this level, which it, it kind of signals that it might be a good support, okay? And the next target level, let's say, if eventually dollar appreciates. Of course, dollar appreciation, remember that it might affect this asset in the short term, in the very short term, yes, not in the long term. For gold, we know already that these kind of uh, deviations, these kind of huge deviations and uptrends form is mostly due to demand increase and not due to dollar effects. Don't forget about that. Um, let's move on to other assets as well. Um, we have the situation with crude oil. Yeah, uh, this is a very curious case because uh, we know already that uh, the fundamentals were at work. We ha have uh, reports from Reuters saying about uh, confirming about the cuts, production cuts, and that is also one of the main factors that pushed the uh, crude oil price to the upside. And you see, it's a an uptrend from the 27th. Um, we have an uptrend. It's quite um, easy to, it's quite apparent to see that it's an uptrend. Uh, this blue line um, is actually very close to the moving average. When there's an uptrend, the moving average, the 30 period one at least, is below the price. Yeah, the price is always moving al uh, above uh, the moving average. Yeah, and now we see this crossover. However, it signaled a, a, a stop of the uptrend, but later we see that the fundamentals at work yesterday at around seven o'clock server time, around seven, nine o'clock, we see that crude oil jumped because of the ge geopolitical events that are happening uh, uh, right now and all these issues that disrupt yeah, production, disrupt supply, and they uh, cause this jump. And obviously, when uh, the uh, supply of crude oil has an issue, then all businesses have an issue, and we have this um, turbulence, we have this trample in the market, and that's why we see that at the same exact time that this happened on um, the 4th of April yesterday, if we look at NASDAQ or S&P, we see that we have a drop, okay? Uh, that was at eight o'clock, around eight o'clock, we have this drop. So at the time the crude oil jumped, we have a drop uh, on the value of indices, US indices. This is NASDAQ, uh, I can obviously um, drag and drop the S&P as well. You have the same impact. Uh, I would expect that retracement would happen uh, during this time. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen. It didn't completely retrace. Uh, the NFP is uh, coming out in six minutes and that might distort the analysis for a retracement. Because the retracement is on 61.8, which is uh, around this level, and uh, it didn't happen. It, mean, it means that uh, the market is waiting for something. Obviously, it's for the news, yeah? Um, and regarding the employment change, for the non-farm employment change, the market expects a drop actually from 275,000 to 212,000 um, in regards to the non-farm employment change in the US. Um, 
um, based on the fundamentals, based on what I'm analyzing recently, um, based on the uh, PMIs that are in the US that have this expansion, uh, that are, are in the expansion area and that are actually stable, I would say that we might see a surprise today. Okay, it might be the case that the employment change will be reported um, higher than expected. Uh, I know, I know that you have read the news, you have read uh, the uh, inflation expectations from the Fed. It's expecting that inflation uh, will decrease um, uh, significantly. They have this expectation. However, is it realistic? What kind of data are they using to analyze and to uh, form these expectations? Maybe there is something that we miss. However, however, it could be the case that inflation will eventually um, decrease as they expect. But to, for that to happen, we have to see the labor market data coinciding with these views and with these uh, uh, expectations. If we see a strong labor market conditions, then unfortunately inflation might not drop to the target level uh, as they think. Okay, and obviously that is affecting the dollar uh, and uh, obviously the dollar is the main driver for many forex pairs, yeah? Um, we haven't seen the euro dollar. And there are th uh, three minutes left. Uh, what is the market doing today in regards to euro and dollar? Um, we see that uh, it had like, um, I wouldn't say a downside move because it's kind of, uh, it's kind of uh, sideways after the drop yesterday. Um, the dollar um, yesterday went late yesterday had an, uh, an appreciation after a strong depreciation. That's why we see the euro dollar here uh, doing this uh, pattern yeah, of uh, upward movement and then downward. Uh, and then after it found this support, it retraced back to the moving average. So it's kind of stable, stable now at the moving average. Uh, don't forget that the 30 period moving average is the best for me at least uh, to use for intraday analysis yeah and uh, obviously this is the reason you see that uh, the price when it stabilized it returned back to the 30 period moving average yeah uh, in case you want to ask me something you can use the interface of go webinar i can see your uh, uh, messages and I can, uh, when I have time, I will discuss uh, what uh, you want me to discuss. Uh, please refer to any Forex pair that you would like to focus on or any other asset uh, as well. So we have uh, Euro dollar, gold. We said some uh, words about the uh, stocks, uh, Nasdaq, S&P 500 and uh, obviously, I'm going to keep the dollar index as well here, as well as the dollar cut, because we have also the release of the Canadian employment data. And we are ready to receive the figures. All right. So we have some moments left, some seconds, 20 seconds. And we should have some results. And um, basically I was uh, pretty much right. The employment report is stronger for the US. Uh, let's see the exact figures. Um, 
So we have, let's see how the market was affected. The dollar is appreciating. Uh, actually, uh, the non-farm employment change is now released at 303,000 instead of the 212,000 expected figure. So that's why the dollar is appreciating as a first reaction. The market, uh, the euro dollar obviously is uh, going to the other direction uh, as the euro is losing against the dollar. The dollar cut is appreciating. What happened with uh, the Canadian employment change? It's less than expected. Actually, it turned to negative um, instead of growth. Uh, it's way, way lower than expected. And the unemployment rate is at 6.1% instead of 5.9% expected unemployment rate. So it increases. And obviously that creates uh, Canadian dollar depreciation. So that's why the dollar cut is uh, on an upward momentum at the moment. And uh, it creates a good opportunity uh, as it breaks the resistance and moves to the upside. Let's look at the dollar cut because it's quite interesting. Uh, to look at it on the four hour chart, we need to see the Bollinger Bands, the volatility. Uh, we need to see what is the expected uh, next resistance. We have two forces now in place. We have dollar appreciation, US dollar appreciation. We have Canadian dollar uh, losing ground against the US dollar because of this uh, news. We have the dollar index showing us that the dollar is currently uh, gaining strength, currently gaining ground against the basket of currencies. And this obviously gives us a good idea of what is happening right now. The uh, gold, gold is, uh, if we look at the hourly chart, we see that obviously is uh, going down because uh, as, as I said, in the short term, we have this uh, effect and dollar is bringing dollar strengthening is bringing gold down and um we and, and from these figures we might see uh gold reaching back to this support at uh, two thousand two hundred and seventy dollars per ounce um Let's see if this will be the case and the dollar will strengthen even more because of this unexpected figure. Uh, as I said, it, I, I would say that uh, this um, unexpected result uh, was quite, uh, you, you could guess what will happen because the uh, economy is actually doing very well. Uh, there is business conditions um, improvement in the U.S. and it's stable. And that's why we see here are the non-farm payrolls for March um, to have uh, this uh, basically increase to, uh, to a figure of 303,000 instead of the expected 212,000. Uh, don't forget that the previous figure was 270,000. So we have a 53,000 increase. The unemployment rate is reduced to 3.8% instead of 3.9%. Very good news for the dollar. Unfortunately for the Fed, um, it doesn't look good for inflation. We might, they might not see the results they expect. Uh, and that's why the market uh, reacts in this way with dollar uh, strengthening. The dollar uh, cut remains stable. It's uh, a specific resistance at 1.36, 100. So uh, this, there are some important resistance levels here they were tested in the past this week uh, there is no uh, significant breakout the market now is trying to test again this 
resistance levels. This, the, the, let's put a line on this one. Um, because a breakout of the resistance will probably mean a rapid price movement to the upside. For that to happen, it means that dollar has to strengthen even further. The Canadian dollar has to depreciate uh, even more, and that will boost the dollar cut to the upside. Um, let's see. The uh, one thing that is for sure is that we have high volatility around the moving average. You see, for example, that the Bollinger Bands show uh, deviations from the low to the upper band of 165 pips, which is huge uh, for intraday. And um, this breakout would mean uh, further upward movement, uh, let's say 1.37, 200. It could be, it could be. However, we might we have to have strong indication of a breakout. So uh, be careful when uh, you look at this particular chart. Any questions? Regarding the indices, um, we see a drop here. It tested the support, came back regarding NASDAQ. Um, there's no, uh, the, the market basically reversed back too much, uh, too quickly and remain on the you know, initial level. Um, in regards to the S&P, it's the same. Um, the, sorry, the Dow Jones and the S&P, it's roughly the same despite the fact that the dollar index is actually on a high level as before we see that the uh, there's some kind of resilience in the uh, indices so it could be the, the case that if the dollar eventually start to weaken the um, the uh, us indices might might move to the upside faster so because we see some resilience here, it's quite apparent. Yeah. I see some questions. Let's see, Robert. Uh, US dollar index already stopping the up movement. Yes. So we have a stop. Yes, you are right. This was the initial reaction. Don't forget. Uh, it was a shock for the market. It was an unexpected move. This is what the initial, let's say, reaction is as a response to the figures, but we now have to understand if this initial reaction, which of course will experience a retracement as well, that's why it stopped, yeah? The market cannot move to, to one direction uh, continuously, yeah? We have to have some retracements until it continues again. However, uh, it might be the case also that it will reverse fully. So, um, uh, and, 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 the question is, do we have enough data to, su to suggest a complete reversal? I think not, because the uh, NFP is the most important news and a lot of activity is going on. And obviously an initial reaction has to be followed with other reactions as well. So I'm expecting more activity, to be honest. Even though we are um, uh, 10 minutes into the uh, session after the uh, NFP announcement, uh, I believe there is much more to see. So let uh, look at the dollar cut, for example. The dollar Canadian, the, the dollar cut, okay, uh, did not move to the downside. It remained on the upside because we have also dollar, uh, we have also Canadian dollar weakening, yeah. Uh, Robert, do you think that we will see more of a one-way movement? Yeah, um, the best guess is the dollar cut, yeah, because we have these opposite forces, yeah, that create this opportunity for the dollar cut. Uh, dollar appreciation, Canadian dollar depreciation. Uh, one is strengthening, the other, the other is weakening. 
So we are talking about a pair here, yeah, two currencies. Um, so far, it shows a breakout. It's on the upper band of the Bollinger Bands, and that kind kind of creates um, a signal that that that's a that's a good let's say resistance level that might become a support level uh, uh, later. It's currently broken. Let's see what's going to happen. We need to see more momentum regarding that. So gold remains stable. Dollar index uh, is currently uh, in some kind of short-term consolidation after the first initial uh, reaction. Dollar card is moving to the upside. And we didn't check crude oil. So crude oil remains on the sideways, no movement. Eighty five point eighty remains as a um, intraday support. We don't see too much movement, but the consolidation phase is apparent and it creates this kind of um, triangle formation, I would say. At some point, crude oil has to show more movement, more activity. This might take place later. Um, today it's Friday. Uh, we didn't have any significant news during the day in regards to uh, the uh, geopolitical tensions that are, are taking place. However, uh, and that's why crude oil did not move uh, at all. Um, it might it might happen later, and and of course we would expect breakouts of the triangle formation. Now, S and P 500, it's starting to go to the upside. Probably uh, the market uh, now is uh, deciding if it's going to see a completion of the retracement, yeah? Because it didn't happen before, it might happen now, yeah? That's why we see now it's going back to the 61.8. Any other questions, guys? Dollar uh, cuts going up. It's going up. Uh, let's look at another pair, which is cut CHF. Let's see what is happening with this one. Quite uh, apparent when you use the cut CHF uh, forex pair. Quite apparent to look at the Canadian dollar weakening against the. CHF as well, because CHF obviously is not affected by anything at the moment. Uh, I mean, that it's not affected uh, greatly. Yeah, it's the Canadian dollar weakening that moves the pair to the downside. And as long as we see this Canadian dollar weakening and, and dollar obviously remaining stable, the dollar cut is potentially uh, moving uh, rapidly to the outside, to the upside. Um, it's good to have also this pair as well to monitor what is happening with the um, Canadian dollar, what's happening with the dollar um, to the US dollar as well, how they are affected. Any other questions? We see that um, retracement is on the way in regards to in regards to the S and P. Obviously, the Nasdaq as well should have the same chart at the moment. Nasdaq is trying to get back to the moving average as well. Um, I don't have the Fibonacci expansion, but if I want to use it as well on Nasdaq, it will be like this: start of the shock end of the shock which is the 100 FIBO and the retracement should be on the 61.8 on the Nasdaq is uh,
what will be the next resistance level for the dollar cut resistance level good question actually i was looking at the chart and i was trying to find one if we look uh, back let's say one month back there is no price level that could act as a resistance which means that it might have a good upside uh, momentum if we have a strong breakout uh, there's nothing here to suggest that there's a, going to be a resistance in the short term. Yeah, uh, let's use the dollar. The, use the daily chart. The daily chart could uh, provide us with some insights, and we see some levels which are very very far. one point thirty six four hundred and sixty that is thirty pips from the breakout that would be probably the initial one another question how do you see the dollar yen could the japanese central bank intervene here above 152 to push the price down dollar yen let me see dollar yen use the we use the template where we have the intraday analysis obviously the dollar is up it's basically gaining strength and that's why we see this now we see this uh, um, upside movement which is quite strong for intraday yeah it's crossing the 30 period moving average um, intervene central bank intervention um, we know the in general the market is 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 um, is looking at the interest rate differentials yeah while the dollar is kept high and the other rates are very 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 low it means that's the, that's that the dollar should gain more traction and should gain more than the other currencies okay we might see an intervention we might see that uh, currently i haven't read any um content that could suggest uh, a, a, a specific, specific direction for our intervention. Let me see. However, however, we, what we know already is that because of this news, there is there is more probability that the uh, there will be a delay, I would say, and the people know know this. However, and, and obviously the dollar will gain against the yen, yeah. Um, but in order to be sure about a change in expectations because of the news, you could use the CME FedWatch tool and look at the probability of um, what what would be the probability of a June rate cut. And while I'm using this tool, wow, 50.7%. Okay, this was 70% last week. Within this current week, it was 60%. And now it's 50.7%. And this is actually telling us that uh, expectations changed. Okay, probably we'll have a delay. We are talking about 50% probability of the rate cut to take place in June. Okay. Obviously, the May one should be um, no change, 94.2% no change in May, and in June, 50%. So we have uh, confirmed that expectations are uh, changed. Uh, people are expecting, uh, more people are expecting a delay. Um, and uh, it also explains this dollar uh, strengthening so the dollar yen um that upper band looks good to me for today 
on the 30 minute chart by using the Bollinger bands, 50 Bollinger bands, 50 period with two deviations. Uh, it seems that it's kind of touching the upper band. If I'm using the one hour, we have more. Um, and probably uh, the next resistance will be at this level. I hope you are happy with that in terms of uh, intraday uh, forecast, let's say, um, based on technicals, based on uh, volatility and Bollinger Bands. Any other questions, guys? You are welcome, Kai. Um, I'm mostly interested in this retracement. Um, eventually, it did not happen. Okay. The dollar is continuing to appreciate. The dollar cut is also uh, moving towards our potential resistance. It's quite interesting to see that uh, two opposing forces are driving the dollar cut to the upside. We already established a potential resistance as well. Um, it's good that the dollar is up, continuing to appreciate while the Canadian dollar, which can be seen, it, it's actually um, it's told uh, the Canadian dollar is uh, more stable now. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't. It's not weakening. It's not strengthening. It remains stable, um, but the dollar is driving the market. Uh, the euro dollar cut. Uh, so, sorry, the um, USD cut uh, pair to the upside because of dollar strengthening, um, and that is the reason why um, most when we have uh, employment data released for Canada and for the US. People are looking at the dollar cut, obviously, to um, uh, to exploit these two opposing forces. Yeah, but uh, employment data for Canada, good, good employment data for the U.S. will have uh, probably this result, and opposing forces driving the dollar cut to the one direction. Yeah. <clears throat> Gold remains stable for now. You see, it's quite apparent that gold, even though we have strong dollar appreciation intraday, um, we look at gold and you see that the uh, this dollar this effect on the dollar is not actually moving gold to the downside. Other forces are taking place for demand and supply of gold yeah, to form a new price equilibrium. Okay, It's not the dollar that is going to, in, in, in this, for this particular asset, is not going to you know, drive the market to a particular level and, and have this significant effect. No, it's the market, demand and supply are going to have a significant effect on the price. Anything else? So, um, let's wrap it up. Uh, employment change for Canada. Let's look at the economic calendar as well.
I'm trying to find the best way to um, show this. So non-farm payrolls. Um, unemployment, unemployment and non-farm payrolls as well in Canadian dollar. Non-farm payrolls March. So uh, we have our 303K, 303K, yeah. Uh, against the 200, uh, 212k, uh, we had also the unemployment rate at uh, 3.8 percent instead of this is the unemployment rate 3.8 percent instead of the 3.9 percent, so lower unemployment rate. Very good, uh, very uh, promising, very um, interesting data for the employment uh in the us for the labor market uh for canada we have an employment uh unemployment rate of 6.1 percent against the expected uh 5.9 5.8 percent was the previous um the employment change is turned out negative uh, as i mentioned so uh higher unemployment rate uh, decline in employment leads to um, worse conditions for the labor market in Canada. And that led to uh, Canadian dollar depreciation against other currencies, while the US dollar gained more ground, strengthened against the other currencies, and that led to the dollar cut jump to the upside in regards to inflation what can we expect uh next week uh let's see if we have we have uh at uh, on the 10th of april we have the yearly uh the monthly yearly uh, core as well uh, inflation data for the united states um the previous figure for the yearly calculation was 3.2%. Remember that the uh, inflation uh, target is 2%. We have a long way to go. I think the Federal Reserve uh, would be very surprised from the NFP. And as well, uh, on the 10th of April, obviously we are going to cover this event as well. Um, if they don't see any significant decrease in this figure, uh, the dollar uh, will still see appreciation uh, if, um, if this will be the case. So um, if there are no other um, uh, changes in interest rates, the, the interest rate differential will be very high. Yeah? A, de a further delay of the uh, of interest rate cuts obviously is going to um, is going to leave the dollar uh, index to the upside to higher levels. The dollar index uh, was this past uh, two months, I would say, uh, one month and a half. It was on an uptrend, as you can see here. Uh, this started on the 14th of March. This was the initial increase. Let's say it was on the 8th of March. Yeah, and this is clearly an uptrend. And um, this changed when the uh, when the dollar index moved to the downside, crossing the 30 period moving average on the 3rd of April. Yeah. And now it's going up again due to the NFP report. Crude oil just passed the uh, triangle formation. And it's currently trying to break uh, resistance levels. I would say that there is potential for an upside uh, movement 
and uh, probably and also the Bollinger Bands are kind of in favor of such to the 87 dollars per barrel if eventually uh, we would see a breakout of the 86.5 it has to get out of consolidation there's no other way I hope uh, I covered everything for you guys. If any other questions, uh, um, please let me know. If you have any other questions. Anything you want to discuss? Are you covered? Something that I didn't mention is the average hourly earnings, uh, the monthly calculation. Uh, we have an increase from the previous 0.3%. Uh, it's, un it's unexpected. So uh, the particular figure did not have much impact. I would say most impact um, uh, was uh, the result of the higher uh, non-farm employment change and the unemployment rate. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good weekend. Um, thank you for attending this session. I hope it was uh, pro it provided uh, valuable in information for you. Uh, I hope you had had a good trading session. And uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.